Hi, everybody. Okay, so we're still on this journey to talk about uh, the verb to be, all right? And in Spanish, that could be either ser or estar. And today, we're going to focus on the simple past and a little bit of the simple future, all right? So Anna and I are going to do some uh, examples for you that we did in the meeting uh, just recently. But before we do that, let's just define the simple past. In Spanish, this is used to express actions that started and ended in the past. It's already done, okay? Uh, it can describe the past. It can be used to talk about actions that take place at a certain time in the past in a specific way. It can be used to talk about past routines, like I did this over and over again. It can be used... Um, uh, for courtesy to explain the reason that something happened, the reason for an action. And finally, it can be used to show actions that happened in the past and that interrupt the course uh, of another that was already in progress. So uh, something was happening until this happened. All right. So let's look at some examples. Uh, we'll read them. And uh, then we'll see if we talk about any of these. Anna, let's go through one through 10. Hi, Anna. Thanks. Uh, let's go through these 10 examples for everybody. Is that okay? Así es. Vamos a empezar con el número uno. ¿Cómo estuvo tu fin de semana? So this is just simply, how was your weekend? This is talking about the weekend and how it was. This is a little bit different then how were you this last weekend? This is what's common. ¿Cómo estuvo tu fin de semana? How was your weekend? Okay, para nosotros que hablamos español, ¿cómo estuvo el fin de semana? O ¿Cómo te fue el fin de semana? Es lo mismo. How was your weekend? Más simple. How was your weekend? Sí. Yes. No. All right. In my last year of school, I was recruited by the Army. En mi último año de la escuela, fui reclutado por el ejército. Okay, and we have a second option, which is... Me reclutaron en el ejército en mi último año de la escuela. So in English, that would be more like, they recruited me into the military my last year of school, right? Estaré bien una vez que descanse un poco. I will be fine once I rest a little bit. Boy, that sounds like me. <laughs> Será un bombero cuando él crezca. He'll be a firefighter when he grows up. Alguien me dijo que estuvieron ahí anoche. Someone told me they were there last night. Fue divertido pasar el rato con buenos amigos. It was fun to hang out with good friends. So this is this is something. Hang out uh, is to be. It's to be, right? Uh, it's a phrasal verb that, that means to be with good friends. Hang out, to spend time with good friends. Para nosotros, hang out es una frase verbal. Significa pasar el rato. Con... En esta frase es, it was fun to hang out with your friends. Fue divertido pasar el rato con buenos amigos. La siguiente oración es, ella estará ahí alrededor de las nueve. She will be there around 9 p.m. or a.m. Or we can say, she will be there around nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Seremos chaperones en el baile de la escuela. Oh, that sounds fun. We yeah, will be right. chaperones for the school dance. I think that sounds so cool. Okay. Chaperones. Chaperones. Okay. <laughs> We will be chaperones for the school dance. Sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Estuvimos en la playa toda la tarde. We were at the beach all afternoon. And so, for the Spanish speakers, we were at the beach, not in the beach. In would be like inside the beach, but we were not in the beach, we were at the beach. Así es. Cuando, si queremos decir que estuvimos dentro del mar, de la playa, del agua, entonces sí decimos in, usamos la preposición in. Pero en este caso, simplemente para describir que estuvimos en la playa, en general, usamos at. At. Es un lugar. It's a place. Okay. Correcto. They were chased by dogs. 
fueron oh, perseguidos por perros. I know. I know, yes. Or I was being chased by the dogs. O oh, estuve siendo perseguido por los perros. Estuve siendo, okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to remember. Um, I was being. You can use that a lot. Um, let's keep going. Let's do uh, three or four more. We will be at home later or we will be at the house later. Estaremos en la casa más tarde o estaremos en mi hogar o en el hogar más tarde. Okay, so the reason I want to talk about this, Anna, is because in English, it's very common to call our house or our home, it's the same thing, right? Pretty much. And so we can be in our house, in our home, at our house, at our home, right? And it's the same. But in Spanish, uh, it's not really exactly the same thing. You'll be really good at this job. Serás realmente bueno en este trabajo. You'll be really good at this job. You will be, or you'll be. Okay. Uh, the next one. ¿Cuándo fue la última vez que estuviste aquí? <laughs> when was the last time you were here or that you were here? Four when years ago. <laughs> four years ago. I, I was there four years ago. The mm. time passes so fast. It's time to come back. ¿Y la última? Siempre yes. fuiste el niño más inteligente de la clase. I know, thank you. Okay. <laughs> you were always the smartest kid in the class. You were always the smartest kid in the class. Siempre fuiste el niño más inteligente de la clase. All right, everybody. Ciao. Bye.